In a tweet thread this morning, Yaman Tastivar, and I hope I pronounced that approximately correctly, posted some pictures of a super exponential curve. This is a curve that actually has some sort of a knee in it. It's not a consistent curve, and I'll talk about that more in just a little bit. But the important part for us is this really tails into the way that artificial intelligence has been moving lately. And in addition to talking about Tesla, just for fun, I'm going to show you some images from Stable Diffusion and discuss just how much this and other solutions like OpenAI's Dolly 2 have demonstrated this super exponential type of curve. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm going to start with this discussion about super exponential curves. Again, this is the tweet by Yaman Tastavar from just this morning as I record this. And I think this is really worth looking at and trying to understand a little bit. Human beings are really bad at understanding exponentials, much less super exponentials. So this is something we need to kind of try to wrap our heads around. And I'm going to talk about Tesla, of course, but then later on, I'm going to talk about stable diffusion and OpenAI's Dolly 2 and things like that and how they're also demonstrating this super exponential curve. And what that means for us in the near future, like in just the next couple of years, what things might change. So since I know a lot of you are Tesla focused, I'm going to put the Tesla discussion at the beginning, but then I do want to talk about stable diffusion and Dolly and Dolly 2, etc., because I think they also demonstrate this and probably in a little bit more graphical, <laughs> because they're images, way than Tesla's full self-driving does right at the moment. All right, so let's begin with the tweet itself. Both graphs show a super exponential curve. The graph on the left shows how it appears on a linear y-axis scale, and the graph on the right shows how it appears on an exponential y-axis scale. Tesla full self-driving is improving super exponentially, so get ready for the what the heck <laughs> moment. So the first question you might have is what in the world is a super exponential function? I think this is the best kind of condensed version of what it is that I have found. So I figured I would go ahead and read it. Foresight University. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description, of course, so you can go check it out yourself. Unlike exponential growth, where the curve looks the same at every point, super exponential growth has one or more knees in the curve, places where growth suddenly switches from a slower to an even faster or sometimes slower exponential mode. And here we have global human population since 10,000 BC to 2000 common era. And you can see what happens is it grows, it grows, it grows. And then there's a knee here and it grows really rapidly. And then there's obviously another knee here in the late 1800s ish. It's a little hard to tell from this graph scale. So you can see how it suddenly goes up a little before the end of the before common era age, you know, so before AD one more or less, and how it makes a big jump there. And then there's another significant knee somewhere around the year 1800 as the industrial revolution really kicks off and population grows out of control. So a standard exponential curve is something like this, where it looks the same at every point, while a super exponential curve looks more like this. And yes, I had to move myself out of the way because the knee of the curve is right here. So you can see there's a pretty consistent curve. And then right here, there's this bam, it just goes way, way, way up. And this, by the way, is a graph of world GDP. This is one of the images that Yaman provided in his tweet, but this is world gross domestic product. And you can see there's a very, very distinct knee that happens right around here here. Again, a little difficult to tell somewhere around the 1900s ish is where the knee happens. And it just takes off and goes much, much more rapidly. And then we have the point of Yaman's tweet, which is this nice graph of the way that artificial intelligence has been rapidly, rapidly increasing. And as far as I understand it, this is a logarithmic scale. What a logarithmic scale does is it squishes down exponentials. So if you took a standard exponential curve and you mapped it on a logarithmic scale, it would be linear that would just go straight up in a horizontal line at some angle or something like this. So the fact that this is curving upward in a logarithmic scale just indicates how outrageous this growth actually is. So you have to kind of double this or exponential it or something like that. So it gets even steeper. It again goes back to this kind of thing where you're seeing a little bit of growth and then it goes absolutely nuts. So basically that's what a super exponential is. And if we go back to this image, you can see the idea here is that we're getting things that are like really, really dumb. And for a long time they were super dumb and they were kind of like ant level and then they got to bird level, then they got to chimp level. But you can see what's happening is that the time difference between 
each of these upgrades from one level of intelligence to another is getting smaller and smaller. And the real moment is right here. You get to the dumb human where it's like, oh, that's adorable. It can't really do a good job. The difference between that and the best human in terms of intelligence or whatever kind of performance metric you're looking at is really, really small because it's already moving upwards at such a drastic rate. So what does this mean for Tesla's full self-driving? Well, currently we're kind of in the dumb human level of full self-driving. We're kind of in that like, yeah, it's a adorable it almost works right doesn't quite work right it has some weird problems and things like that but remember as recently as the 20 zeros the 20 aughts like 2007 2010 etc the level of intelligence of full self-driving was somewhere between an ant and a bird in other words they had this hard-coded stuff and the car could drive very slowly over a very restricted path and it could do okay and it could drive really really slowly but it had a lot of accidents and it would run off the road there were a lot of competitions in the early aughts for full self driving and as far back as the 90s and things. So, you know, we're looking at levels of intelligence that are way down here on the curb. And the fact that we're at the level right now with Tesla's full self-driving of dumb human, it's like it's not as good as an average driver and it's kind of adorable, means that what we're looking at is the time difference between dumb human and really, really good human and then way better than any human driver is probably super compressed. So if roughly it's taken us 15 years to go from ant to dumb human, you might think, oh, it'll take another 15 years to go from dumb human to really good human but what we're looking at from a graph like this is it could be a matter of months and this is the reason why Elon Musk has been so adamant about the fact that he believes that 2022 is finally the year that this is going to happen I know he's predicted many times in the past and people make hay of the fact that he said there'd be a million robo taxis on the road by 2020 obviously this problem was a lot harder than they thought and obviously this graph does not really show all of the details of how hard this is and how much people have to work on it. But if we have the headroom, if the architecture and the hardware that Tesla is working on right now have the headroom that I think they do, we could be looking at from dumb human to best human in the matter of just a couple of months. So truly by the beginning of 2023, end of 2022, which is only about three months away right now, we could be looking at full self-driving at the level of best human driver. And then after that, the sky's the limit because it could actually get to an order of magnitude better than the best human driver in another few months. So this kind of thing can happen incredibly rapidly. Now, again, I want to reiterate that the architecture they're using or the hardware they're using, something like that could fail. It could reach the maximum headroom and it could bump up against that. And this might not happen. So it might stall out and it might take another re-architecting in order for this to happen. But it sounds like things are actually moving upwards at a very significant trajectory. And of course, we are only a few days away from AI day number two or AI day 2022, which by the way, if you missed my announcement last week, I am actually going to be at. So definitely subscribe to the channel and click the bell and all of that other good stuff to make sure you get notified about all of that stuff because it's going to be really exciting. I'll be boots on the ground checking it out and reporting back from there as quickly as I can. And then I'm sure over the next several weeks, I'll have much more detailed videos about each piece of Tesla's AI Day presentations. So anyway, stay tuned for all of that starting on Friday. It's going to be very, very soon and very exciting. All right. So the folks interested in Tesla only can go ahead and uh, check out right now if you're interested. Interested, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about Stable Diffusion, OpenAI's Dolly and Dolly 2, and the incredible ramping at which they are able to generate images. So what I'm looking at right now is a program called Charlie. I was actually going to do a whole video on how to install Stable Diffusion, which is open source and super cool on your Mac or PC. But actually, this program, Charlie, is just kind of awesome. So I have a Mac. So basically, Charlie is a one click solution. You just download it. Again, I'll put a link in the description, but it's basically just charlie.com. And you click it and you install it and all of the stuff just works great. And then you can start generating images. Images. So you can see I have a picture of a super exponential superhero flying through the clouds with the earth below, photorealistic, 8K ultra detailed. So anyway, you can see that I've got some things. I've just been messing around with some of the prompts and some different parameters that you have. Now, if you're interested in breaking down stable diffusion and messing around with the code base, which I actually am, you're going to want to go to GitHub and you're going to want to install it yourself and everything. But Charlie is really great. You can just start typing in prompts like right away and you can get all 
all of these really interesting things. I don't know why I've got this idea of teddy bears and bunnies and Godzilla and stuff this morning, but that was what that was what I got in my head. So anyway, you can see Godzilla as an adorable teddy bear breathing fire or another version of it. A lot of this has to do with the number of diffusion steps, and I need to do an entire video on diffusion at some point, so I will talk about that for now. Just, <laughs> just assume it's all magic. It's all working underneath the hood. But this is the really interesting part, and this actually is what is, you know, defined sort of diffusion. If you go back to step one, you can see that this is the originating noise that causes pictures to exist. So this is basically step one in the diffusion process. This is step two. Step three, for some reason, was causing errors and it wouldn't work. But anyway, so I skipped ahead. I think this is five steps here. So you're starting to see something that's pink and potentially teddy bear-like. And by the way, the prompt here is Godzilla as an adorable pink teddy bear. And a lot of these other things are what people have discovered works pretty well in terms of making the images look better. So I just kind of tack a lot of this stuff on and we could try different things, obviously. But so we've got one step here, two steps here, about five steps here, and then things get kind of frightening. <laughs> I may have misspoken, but I believe this was three steps here. This is six steps, this one. This is about 10 steps. This is 20 steps. This is 50 steps. This is 100 steps, and this is 150 steps, which is the maximum you're allowed to do. So if I look at that guy, he's a pretty scary looking bear there. So it starts looking more and more like a teddy bear and a little bit less like Godzilla. I actually think in some senses, this one right here might be the best. But anyway, you can see how you can create amazing amounts of art, and every time you regenerate the image, it does something a little bit different. And just for fun, let's try something else. I'm gonna try a rainbow colored iguana surfing the Milky Way galaxy, and I'm gonna hit generate while we talk about this for a while. So one thing I should have noted about this is that Charlie actually runs on your own GPU. So I've got an Apple Mac Studio with an M1 and 64 gigabytes of integrated graphics memory in it. And if I pull up the uh, CPU and GPU stuff, you can see that it's actually burning quite a bit. <laughs> you can see that it just ramped up as it started doing its sampling. It ramped up to like 100% of the built-in memory. And I've checked it out. It The model uses somewhere between 13 and 16 gigabytes of RAM for the GPU as it's actually running. So if you have a computer system that's on that order, if you have an NVIDIA or M1 Mac or something like that, that has at least 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM in it, you can actually run this stuff on your own computer. Now I'm cutting this because I was moving things around and everything, but I've discovered that with 150 samples, it takes just about two minutes for it to actually run from start to finish. It's much faster if you just do a few steps, but obviously the results get better the more steps you do. So anyway, Anyway, there's some options here. As you can see, I've got it set to 150 sampling steps. There's also PLMS sampling, and I don't know what that stands for. I tried to find it, but it's a different version of sampling that apparently creates more dreamlike or abstract vibes. But anyway, you can see that this is sampling. It's rather slow because again, it's going through 150 steps, and this all has to do with diffusion, and I'm gonna do a video about that as soon as I have time to do that. But anyway, the upshot of this is that we're moving from an era where it took talented, skilled people who would think about things and create things over a period of time. I mean, maybe hours, maybe days, maybe months or something. We're moving to a period where non-skilled people like me can just type things in and within minutes or even seconds if you have faster you know, GPUs or if you have access to things like Google Colab or something like that, you can make all of this stuff yourself really rapidly. And unfortunately, one of the uh, weird things about Charlie, it's brand new software, but once in a while it produces an image that's black and you can see there's some back here that are kind of duplicated. So I'm not exactly sure why that's the case, but I'm gonna to try to run it again while we talk. Hopefully we'll get an actual result here. But anyway, you know, it's not perfect, but this is really remarkable that this is open source. The model is available with all of the weights, pre-trained, all of that kind of stuff that you can just go ahead and go out and use. So anyway, what is the big deal about this? Well, the big deal about this is that a couple of months ago, this stuff didn't exist. Dolly 2 didn't exist and Stable Diffusion didn't exist. And a year ago, we were looking at Dolly that just came out and it was really amazing, but it was also kind of like that adorable child thing. You know, you're looking at images that were like, oh, that's cute. That's that's almost right, but it's not quite right. And within a year, we've gone from that to these things producing images that oftentimes are good enough to be able to be used. In fact, I'll use one of these images as my thumbnail, so that'll be part of the creative process for this video itself, is I will generate the thumbnail using 
King Charlie and Stable Diffusion. And then if we project forward, maybe even only six months, but certainly by a year from now, we should be looking at stuff that's beyond normal human capability. It should be something that is so good that you're just like, man, there's not even any competition. A human artist probably can't do something that good and that creative. So that's what I'm talking about with this super exponential stuff. And that's why I thought this actually tied in well together. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the thumbnail. I'm not sure. I love the galaxy behind it. The Milky Way looks awesome and the colors are just amazing. But again, you know, right now this is only a 512 by 512 image, so it's not that big. But look at the detail of this stuff. I mean, you've got the wrinkles of the iguana. You've got, uh, he's not quite rainbow colored, but he's got quite a few and you've got a rainbow colored Milky Way in the background. So again, this was just, I just tried it and I had no idea what was going to pop out. But this is really amazing. This is something where if you told an artist, if you gave an artist that prompt, it would take them at a minimum a day to sketch and then paint this thing. And that's somebody who's working really, really rapidly. So we're already looking at something that's approaching the best human thing, but doing it much, much faster. And again, I think about Caroli and two minute papers and how he always talks about wait till the next paper or two papers down the line. We're at a stage right now where what could come out in the next six months to a year could be utterly mind blowing. It could be so much better than human capability that we can't quite even understand it. And I'm correlating that to what Tesla and their full self-driving are doing. What you need is tons and tons of data, some very, very smart people working on this stuff, a lot of compute power, and really good neural network architecture. And those things are actually coalescing in a lot of different areas simultaneously. And so what I think we might see at AI Day 2 in terms of full self-driving, I was kind of saying we probably won't see a lot of new stuff, but they might actually reveal like version 11 of the software or show some things that are more in the alpha stage at this point that aren't quality controlled enough to go out to the real world and be used by us normal users, but show maybe in simulation or something that the car could potentially navigate a scene at 200 miles an hour virtually and go through things and avoid obstacles and not get into accidents and somehow understand the physics of how the car works and all of that kind of stuff, right? I'm just, this is just total speculation. So don't hold Tesla to this. This is just me. But, you know, think about that kind of thing. We could get to the point where these cars could drive so much better than human beings that, again, it's going to be unsafe to allow humans to drive compared to one of these computer vehicles. And that could happen not in five years or 10 years or even three or four years. It could happen in as little as six months to a year if this type of super exponential curve maintains. So in my mind, at least, it's really worth considering this and thinking about the fact that we don't understand exponentials much less super exponentials like intuitively in our brains. But if we look at the math, we could be talking about full self-driving that is far, far better than human beings in one year from now. And I don't know about you, but that's both super exciting and very humbling and a little bit scary. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking, a little mind blowing. <laughs> super exponentials are not easy to wrap your head around. Anyway, if you did enjoy the episode, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. Content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I actually have been in discussions about this and a whole bunch of other things. So anyway, if you're interested in joining the team, just check out the link in the description. Our Discord channel is quite active and there's some really, really smart people on there that I learn a lot from. So definitely consider joining the team if you're interested in that. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.